Jason the Haida Kauai survival guy here and uh, we just went out this morning and got some Dungeness crabs and so now we're going to make our survival bow drill friction fire and cook them up. Um, yeah, we got a couple of nice Dungeness crabs here and uh, they are delicious. This guy is really strong. He looks like he, oh man, he wants to really bite me. Um, so we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make a nice fire and show you how we cook them up. Uh, okay, so the first thing we need for our bow drill is a hearth board. And I found this nice piece of cedar on the beach to put our drill into. And we're gonna step on it and we're gonna have our drill in here and we're gonna make our friction fire. So the first thing we're gonna do is shape our hearth board. So that looks like it's pretty well set to go. I might want to make it a little bit thinner. We're gonna drill a little spot here for our wood drill to go into. I like to use this red cedar for the hearth board because as the drill is drilling it's going to create some really fine dust out of this cedar and that dust is where your ember is going to go. That ember is what makes your fire, once that friction heats up to about 800 degrees, creates an ember in that cedar dust in all the little rubbings that you make as you're, as you're drilling. So cedar is a good choice for that and I like to get something a little harder for the drill so it doesn't wear out. Yeah, this is just a lot easier to dig than a, a hardwood. So, And you usually end up digging a few of these along the board before you uh, get it right. So it's very important that this is dry. It has to be dry wood. And you know, if you're in the forest looking for something like this, you might not find a piece of red cedar, you might have to find, or you might have to use whatever you can find that's dry and available. Um, cedar isn't found everywhere, it is quite abundant on the west coast of British Columbia. This I found on the beach, you can see it's a piece of drift uh, wood and it, uh, it, there's pieces of it, you know, wherever you look, there's a piece of cedar around here, so we're pretty lucky that way. That's about ready to start for the drill. I think I'm going to make this a little bit thinner here. tinder that I just shaved off and I can break that down into smaller bits of tinder. The reason I wanted to narrow that up a little bit here is because you end up having to make a notch in here. You have to line it up with your hole on an angle this way. That's how I like to do it. I've seen it done a couple different ways. And this is just so that all of that tinder falls down onto a little tray that you have under here. You can use a leaf or a piece of bark or something like that and you sit it underneath here and the tinder from your hole is going to fall down onto your uh, little tray. And so I want to cut it all the way in until it hits the center of that hole. This is a lot easier to do when I'm resting it on something, so I think I might rest it just to avoid cutting myself here. 
You can see that cut in there. And we're pretty well in the center here. You can see that? So our bow drill, our, our drill is going to be uh, turning in there. And then all the embers are going to drop down here and sort of accumulate until some of it gets hot enough and it's going to drop down into that little pile of dust that we create and it's going to sit in there and it's going to be um, ready to put into a, a tinder bundle which is what we're going to make next. We're going to make a whole bunch of shavings and uh, here's something right here that would make excellent tinder and that cedar bark and that floated up as well. So I can see if I can find a little bit drier piece. This one seems a little bit damp. Let's see if I can look higher on the tide line here and find a piece and then we'll uh, make some shavings out of it. But basically what you would want to do is just start uh, shaving it and you can see how it shaves quite nicely. It just turns into a big nest after a while and you get you know a good handful of it enough to fit in two of your hands there and that'll be your your tinder nest and you would take your ember from your hearth board and you would you know put it in your tinder bundle and blow it until it caught on fire so what we're going to do now is um, gather up enough materials there's no sense going through all that work of uh, making an ember and not being ready for it so we're going to get ready for it we're going to get as much tinder and kindling and uh, fire making supplies as we can get. Okay, so we've got some uh, dry cedar bark here. You can get this right off of a live tree if you want, or you can find it uh, floating around or sometimes it's on the forest floor. Uh, this is nice and dry, that's the important thing, and it is cedar bark, and that's really important too. So we're just going to shred this up just by having the, the knife on here. You're not trying to carve it, you're just trying to scrape it. And uh, we're just going to make some really nice tinder here with it. And we're just going to make a little tinder bundle. see all the nice fine fibers that you get out of that and we're going to want to collect all this good stuff up here make a nice little bundle so if it is a dry day this is an excellent thing to go and collect even if you don't need it right away you're always going to need tinder at some point and storing dry tinder it's just another way to be prepared for you know anything can happen you could get wet while you're out gathering food and you come back and your fires out and you need a fire in a hurry to keep you from getting hypothermia it's nice if you have a good stash of all the right materials to get a fire going quickly and you could even just store this piece of bark in your uh, shelter for the next time and then also have a bunch of kindling and that sort of stuff ready to go just have a little fire building kit. It's good to have it in your backpack as well if you're going on a little hike or something and you never know what's going to happen. You might get stuck in a spot and have to spend the night somewhere. And, you know, instead of having to go around and look for a cedar tree and all the bits and pieces that you need to build a fire, you have all the makings of it right there in your pack and uh, all you have to do is find some bigger firewood and you're good to go. I think I'm going to stop here and the next thing we're going to do is uh, make some kindling. We've got these pieces that came off the hearth board. Cedar snaps and splits really easily so we're just going to have a whole bunch of little feather sticks here. And feather stick is basically just, uh, you're just making these shavings like this all the way up the stick and you're leaving them on. You're not, uh, you're not cutting them right off. And this allows you to have a nice burning fuel with air around it. So if you were to throw a big stick on a, a fresh little flame there and 
it didn't have a chance to uh, get big enough it would probably put your fire out but it would really want to eat all of this because there's lots of air around it and it's dry wood and uh, cedar has uh, natural oils in it that uh, make it a little more flammable than the average wood that's why cedar is such a great fire starter it was uh, definitely an important wood for many many different things in the Haida culture and uh, we'll probably be touching on a lot of those things as we uh, as we go along here I'm just just gonna you know mention all the different things that they use the cedars for and how they use the land and the animals and the plants around them that's uh, something that I'm very uh, interested in and I'm always uh, learning more from people around me that have this kind of knowledge. You got a couple feather sticks here and then we're just gonna have some smaller bits and pieces here kindling split or uh, cedar splits quite easily so you can just have lots of little sticks here. And this is uh, the other great thing about cedar is you could do all of this with your knife if you had uh, no axe with you. You had to split a big piece of it like this board. You could stick your knife in there and hammer it with a stick or limb or something, something you use as a, as a mallet and you could easily split it and it wouldn't harm your knife as long as you have a fairly solid knife. So yeah, we're getting all these sticks together. We're gonna, we're gonna, get, we're gonna need a huge bunch of these, so I'm just gonna keep cutting these until we got a big pile. We'll get some different sizes of, uh, of kindling built up so we can gradually build up our fire without uh, choking it out. Different grades of tinder. We have our tinder bundle here, the shaved cedar bark, and we have little shavings of wood here, uh, of cedar. This is all dry wood. We have our feather boards here. Uh, as soon as this ignites with the ember in it, we're going to start trying to get the uh, the feather boards on there and then we'll build it up slowly. That's when you would be putting it into your fireplace there and we'll build it up with this uh, kindling slowly and then add these to it and then from there it should be uh, pretty good. It should be going pretty good and we should be able to start adding bigger stuff on. If it seems like the wood is too big and the fire is choking out, you can always quickly uh, cut some of these down here with your with your knife. And, uh, always be careful when you're doing this, and then you should be able to break it down into smaller pieces. But uh, you know, the one thing you want to remember when you're building a fire is don't be in a big hurry. Once the ember is established, it's it's there and it's going to stay there pretty good. You know, you can fan it a little bit, but you don't have to worry about it going out. It's going to be in that tinder dust and uh, so you don't need to panic. The next thing we're going to do right now is um, make our drill and this looks like a pretty good candidate. I think it's probably a piece of spruce. I don't like to have them too long and they're hard to handle so I'm picking a straight section here that is uh, going to be easy to smooth out and straighten out. So we're going to cut it right about there. That looks to be about maybe 10 inches and it, 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 honestly it doesn't need to be it doesn't even need to be that long. It can be a lot shorter. I've seen them. I've seen them this long. So um, if it ends up being a real pain for me, I might shorten it. I want a fairly blunt tip on it, uh, and that'll give me lots of surface area to create a lot of friction. It's better than having a long, skinny, sharp point on here. That'll, that won't give me a lot of friction. It'll just burn through my hole in my hearth board right away so we want to make a fairly blunt tip on here the tip on the top can be sharper it doesn't have you know if it's sharper then it's going to be uh, creating less friction you don't want any friction up at the top you want it all down at the bottom on your hearth board so we're going to just make a tip on here really quick and uh, Finish it off with the knife.
just want to get this as uniform as possible and as smooth as possible um, because when you're running the bow drill if you have any bumps on here or anything and they catch on the, the hole in the hearth board it just makes it really difficult for using your bow while you're trying to do this and so basically trying to make it yeah really uniform that might even be a bit sharp for my liking I like to have just a nice blunt tip on there and this is something that uh, you know you're, you're gonna want to practice if you want to have this skill there's more than just watching it on YouTube you have to actually get out there and do it so basically I'm just conveying the basic information and you have to go out and decide what materials work best in your environment and then you know for sure that's that's when you actually have that skill you don't have it because uh, someone showed it to you you have it because you've actually done it so I highly recommend you get out and you practice these skills very useful and just a real confidence booster how many people in the in your neighborhood can say that they can do this uh, that actually can it's just a really good thing to know and it's great kids love this sort of thing it's just uh, it's like magic for them so what I'm trying to do now is I, I, I'm looking down the end here I can see I've got a little bit of an oblong shape to my drill here and I'm just basically trying to turn it into a perfect uh, uniform dowel got a nice even circumference all the way around and take out any knots and things like that make a really nice smooth dowel because the string on your bow is going to be running on here it's going to be wrapped around this and it's going to be turning this drill so you really want to uh, make sure that this is nice and smooth and you know if you don't get it right the first time you can stop and adjust it by the time you develop this skill you'll be able to just do it from start to finish without having to adjust anything and, and it'll go pretty smooth but it's just one of those things you have to practice I, I'm always practicing I don't like to declare myself as uh, any kind of an expert at anything I just like to learn new things and do them so this is looking pretty good it's nice and smooth it's got a little knot up here and we'll just shape this end here a little bit we're gonna get a rock or something something non flammable if we can to uh, receive this end and that's where we're going to put all of our pressure we just keep turning it and shaving it and turning it and shaving it and just make sure this finger doesn't get behind the blade of your knife and uh, you'll be just fine so we're making our bow drill or our bow for our uh, bow drill fire and this is uh, just a piece of wood that I found on the beach it's got a nice curve to it sometimes you can find a branch that has a curve in it uh, sometimes it's nice if it has a little bit of uh, springiness in it uh, this one is just one that I found and I think it'll work pretty good so I put some notches in it I put a notch on the end here and a couple on the side to receive the rope so it doesn't slip and I put a couple down here and then I'm just gonna use this for the handle so my string will be from here to here we're gonna put it on kind of loose so that we can twist our drill in there and run it with the bow drill. For our, uh, this is going to receive the top end of our drill and uh, I put a little limpet shell in there. What you want is something that's not going to burn up right away like this piece of wood would probably just burn up from friction and it would create all kinds of smoke that you don't need to, to uh, deal with. So I'm going to have that in there to receive the very tip of it and I see I've got some of this um, seaweed here that looks kind of slimy and that's going to be kind of a, a lubricant and so we're going to use that to stick in there and hopefully it uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to twist nicely and it'll keep it wet and keep it from burning up so we got a nice uh, handle there we got our bow drill uh, done like that and uh, so we're just going to try it out it looks like it's going to work all right and uh, we've got a um, scallop shell here for uh, receiving the uh, tinder that's going to come off of the hearth board. So let's just uh, try this out and see how it goes. So here's my hearth board. And uh, let's 
scallop shell. And this string is quite slippery. And it's hard to tie, so you can see it loses its, uh, the knot loses its hold right away. So we're going to have to readjust that and maybe use a different string. Let's see what I have in my pack here. some more cedar tinder here. I'm just going to keep making a bigger nest for that. Let that ember keep burning away in there. prepared to improvise. There we go. We've got fire. this stuff gets going you just want to keep feeding it little a little bit bigger stuff as it uh, gets comfortable that little bit of extra tinder you know made a big difference and so it's really good to have lots of that on hand have your knife ready to go nothing ever goes according to plan with this kind of stuff it just uh, you just have to know how to read what's going on and uh, what to do next so that you can seize the opportunity and uh, that's the most important thing is uh, just know how fire behaves and what it needs to uh, to ignite 
So those feather sticks that I made were a little bit big, I would say. And you could have some smaller ones, probably half that size on hand, half the size of these. Just make fine, tiny, tiny little ones. And, uh, you know, you could have a couple different sizes there. It never hurts to have lots of different sizes of wood. Don't ignore it at this point because it still wants to go out. And so now it's going to be ready for this bigger stuff here. We're going to pile it on in such a way so that there's still air to get around it. Then it'll burn a lot easier. It'll, um, it'll get a lot hotter. So now we're just going to get this going here and then we're going to cook up our crabs that we caught this morning. We've got two in here. We're going to cook these guys up right on the fire.